Thank you. You may be seated. Thank you all for participating in the worship of build your spirit in the Lord. Hallelujah. So you believe God has called us. Hallelujah. From death to life. From darkness to light. From sin to righteousness. From unrighteousness to his holiness. Hallelujah. And it cannot be just word. There must be corresponding actions. Hallelujah. That confirms the word. It's moving in you. Hallelujah. Somebody give him the praise in here. Hallelujah. Hey. Hallelujah. 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 Ephesians 5 verse 8 to 10 says for you were you were once darkness you were what how much time once darkness but now you are light in the Lord now you are what you are light in the Lord walk come on somebody that term walk there is to live as children of light come on somebody what he said live walk as children of light for the fruit of the spirit is in all goodness righteousness and truth the fruit of the spirit is in all goodness righteousness and truth hallelujah he says finding out what is acceptable to the lord finding out what is what acceptable to the lord many would rather do what is acceptable to them or do what is acceptable to others to please the crowd but we are here to find out what is acceptable to the lord hallelujah to find out what is what acceptable to the lord and that is something that we can't know of ourselves we've got to follow the leading of his holy spirit and embrace the teachings of his word hello somebody what you got to do follow the leading of the holy spirit and embrace the teaching of his word his word came with a message and his spirit comes to bring us in the fullness of that message come on somebody so it's not just to say i heard it and can speak it from your lips but it's to cause that message that word to become flesh to be lived out in this body to show that it's not a life just being hoped for but it's a life that must be lived come on Jesus said it in John 10 verse 10 that he came that we might have life and have it what more abundantly said so a thief come to steal to kill and to destroy but he said but he says I've come that you might have life huh and have it more abundantly you must understand the, the life you have in christ you didn't have it when you were just in the world amongst the world participating in the sinful acts of the world you didn't have that life that's why he said he came that you might have it hello he didn't come to those that didn't have life they have life uh, and every day you hear people say I thank God for life not true right so they thank God for life but what they are thanking God for is mortal life 
But Jesus didn't come to give you more mortal life. He came for you to have what is called the gift of God. Eternal life. Come on now. Huh? Come on now. Romans 6 verse 23 says the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is what? Eternal life in who? In Christ Jesus our Lord. You have that life in him. You have that what? That life in him and that light in him that is in Christ Jesus. And he says without him you were in darkness. Without him you were ignorant. Without him you were lost. Without him you were condemned. He is our salvation. He is our hope. He is our sure reward. He is our eternal life. Come on somebody. Hallelujah. In 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 5, Paul also says to the brethren, You are all sons of light and sons of the day. We are not of the night nor of the darkness. Come on now. We are not of the night nor of the darkness. Notice he's telling them who they are now versus who they were before. And saying who they are now must determine how they conduct themselves. Ah, come on somebody. So he says then, you are sons of light and sons of the day. Are all sons of light and sons of the day? No. There are many, he says, who are children of darkness. Come on somebody. Those are the ones they call children of disobedience. Huh? Hallelujah. So it says, you, if you read in 1 Thessalonians 5, uh, God, um, Paul will declare there that there's a difference between us and the people of the world. He speaks there of the children of light, different from the children of darkness. From verse 1 to 5. We just read verse 5. But we'll back up and show you the context before and after for you to understand that he's saying you are different in Christ. You are not the same as you were when you were not in him. Huh? And he was not in you. Come on now. He said in verse 1, but concerning, that's 1 Thessalonians 5. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 1. Yes, read from verse 1. Now concerning the times and the season, brethren, you have no need that I should write to you. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as what? As a thief in the night. Come on now. For when who say? Look, mark that word, they. He didn't say when we say. Because we, different from they. And he wanted to make that note there but to understand how to read going forward. He says, when they say peace and safety, come on now, then sudden destruction come upon who? Upon us? No, upon them. The they is the them. When they say peace and, and safety, sudden destruction comes upon them as what? Labor pains upon a pregnant woman. Suddenly, she's taken in labor. Huh? They shall not escape. They shall what? No, in other words, there's no salvation for them. You can't have salvation and don't escape sudden destruction. Watch the thing. He says, but you brethren. What he said? You brethren. So he speaks of us as the brethren, as the part of the family. You brethren are not in darkness so that this day should overtake you as a thief. He says, it's not coming as a thief in the night for you. It's for them. You better hear what Paul is saying here. He says, you are not in darkness so that this day should overtake you as a thief. You are all sons of light and sons of the day. 
We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us what? Watch and be sober of sound mind. Come on now. Soundness in the word and in truth. For what? Those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk, drunk at night. But let us who are of the day be what? Sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and as a helmet, the hope of what? Salvation. For God did not appoint us to wrath. Hold on. I think it was everybody. No, God did not appoint us to wrath. They are appointed to wrath. Who do not obey the gospel or believe the truth. Come on now. For God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain what? Salvation through who? There it is again. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, what is that wake or sleep? Whether we live or we die, we should live together with him. Come on, somebody. Both the righteous and the unrighteous die. But he's saying when the unrighteous die, they die with the mortal life taken from them. But they have no eternal life. But the righteous have eternal life. Ah, come on, somebody. Therefore, he said in verse 11, Therefore, what? Comfort each other and edify one another, just as also you are doing. In other words, encourage each other in this, to be mindful of this. Let them see it. people fall out and just think, say, well, it will bless because we have a hope in the gospel that those who don't believe the gospel don't have hello come on now hallelujah and what did he say next he said we urge your brethren to rec what recognize those who labor among you and are what are over you in the lord and admonish you to esteem them what? Very highly in love. For what? For their work's sake. Huh? For their what? Work. Come on, your thing say this is easy work. I tell them, say, come and try it. Then they will know. Hallelujah. Be at peace among yourselves. And notice he said there, you must recognize those who labor. Who what? Uh, not everyone that is among us labor. Among us. Come on. That's why you must know who the Lord appoints you to. Whose congregation the Lord appoints you. Which leadership the Lord appoints you under. Because not all labor over the sheep. Uh, but he says recognize those. What he says must do. And when, and when they don't oh call me name here, some people get big, you know. Oh man, no say Apostle Fagan, just say the Lord Jesus. Eh, eh, but the Lord Jesus sent Apostle Fagan. So you have to recognize the Lord who sent me. But you have to recognize the one the Lord sent to. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Because the demon, when some sons of Sivas was trying to cast out demons out of a man, the demon never said Jesus alone, I know. The demon said, G Paul, I know. And Jesus, I know. Did he mention Paul's name? Oh, just checking because some don't know the word like that, you know. Some don't know the word like that. Some man is not a faith. Hello, somebody. They only talk of faith. But you can't see the fruit of faith in their life. Hello, and we don't want to just talk about it. Hello, somebody. You remember that? That's in Acts 19 for those that want to refresh their memory. In Acts 19, verse 14 to 16 says, Also there were seven sons of Sceva, a Jewish priest who did. So the evil spirits answered and said, 
Jesus I know and what? Paul I know. Did he mention Jesus alone name? He said Jesus and Paul. Why he never just said Jesus? Jesus sent Paul. So why Paul name must mention? Come on now. He says, Paul, I know. He says, but you, the demon said to them, you, I don't know who are you. Come on now. Then the man in whom the evil spirits was leap on them, overpowered them, and prevailed against them, so that they fled out that house naked and wounded. God but then they try to cast out demons. Because anybody can cast out demons, don't. Because you have good heart. Even those were sons of priests. They thought they had good heart. Gone to go cast out demon and demon. Rise up in the man and beat them up and tear up their clothes. And let them bloody and sweat. They run for their life. Hello. Yes, man, get up, come do the work because anybody can open one Bible and talk something and get money. So you think, see, that's how it go. Who no work? Can we just get up and open Bible and talk and get to no money? See, it is easy. Come do it. You will swear reach you. Dog, name your supper and what left. Hello, somebody. I look like you don't realize how many people trying to do that and trying to make a money off people. Where then they know? And then see when they make money off of people, all they tell them about $100,000 per head to go up on Noah Ark. When they know? Did that work out for him? 70 people. My God, then if 70 people get 100000 can't create and tell me how much that. The God of mercy. And then he said, in change your mind. God not better carry them again. Where the money they gone. But you don't envy those people that live those ways. Because you see their end. I say you see their end. You don't have to worry about them. Their end is coming. Come on, somebody. Huh? Because the wages of sin. Oh, you better hear me. Come on, somebody. And when the righteous die, it's not the same thing like when the wicked die. When the, when the righteous die, there's a peace that that righteous man dies in because of the hope that is within him and the testimony that he leaves behind. Come on, somebody. I know Jesus one died upon the cross. But the testimony that he, that he left behind, people are still being transformed through that testimony. Today, hello somebody. They thought by killing him, his church would have locked down. But instead of locked down, you multiply and increase even more. Come on somebody. But warm to the wicked. You see, he, he locked down not too. Of course he locked down. Hallelujah. You know what I'm talking. Me they talk to them. Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> Walk in the light. Why say? Yes, man. Don't get grudgeful of those who are walking in the darkness. Who are putting their hands to evil. He said you must envy those. The works of the wicked. Those who prosper in their wickedness. Huh? Don't envy them. Humble yourself. Come on, somebody. Under the mighty hand of God. And God in due season will lift you up. And put them to shame. That lift up their tongue against you. Because God is still standing up for righteousness. God is still standing up for truth. And many will say, you, your truth is different from my truth. And then there is God's truth. But there are liars. God's truth is the truth. There is no truth outside of God's truth. 
And if you're speaking the word of God and abiding the word, what you declare is truth. But if you're only quoting from truth and saying some other things that can't share with the truth, you're still a liar. Come on. Because you're a true messenger is more than one who just speaks something true. But one who lives according to the truth. Huh? So Jesus never sent out false apostles, false prophets, and false teachers, and false evangelists, and false teachers. Huh? He sent out true apostles. Huh? He sent out what? All right, watch that. Ephesians 4, verse 11 to 16 says, He himself, who? Christ himself gave some to be apostles. Everyone is apostles? No. And some he gave to be what? Prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. What are they given for? They are given for the saints, for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Who is the body of Christ? The church. For the edifying of the body of Christ. Till we all come to what? The unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Notice. He said there, they are given until we come in the unity of the faith. Have we all come in the unity of the faith? No. So won't they still be given? Come on now. I don't understand how some subscribe say, Apostle dead out. But pastor not dead out. Evangelist not dead out. Prophet not dead out. Teacher not dead out, but somehow apostle dead out. Is Jesus Christ himself says he's giving them to the church till we all come to the unity of the faith. How long are you giving it? Till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man to the measure of the statue of the what the fullness of Christ that we should be what no longer children tossed to and fro and carried about with what every wind of doctrine by what the trickery of men in other words they are contrary teachings out there that is against the true teachers that Christ sent and he says if you don't listen adhere to what is being taught by the true ones you will fall a captive to the false ones it's not by coincidence why that is happening it's because when you reject true teachers you fall in their hands are false teachers come on no truth no false teacher point you to true teacher let me remind you that one no true teacher point you to false teacher and no false teacher point you to the true one you think about that think about how some churches that are false today have started you don't have to take my report for it you can just go to the St. James library huh? and ask for the book about the churches of Jamaica and they will give you a list of churches that they call cults and churches that are true churches. You don't have to take it from me. Ah, so when you hear me blazing over here and talking some things that you're not used to hearing and say, false teacher, remember, you know, 
You must check the facts. Because there are records to prove what I'm saying. Yeah. Check the facts, man. There are records to prove what I'm saying. In other words, we're not just talking and sharing opinion and views. Hello, somebody. But truth has a way to speak for itself. Uh, are you hearing me? Did Jesus not speak against false teachers? Is it unchrist like to speak against false teachers and to call them by name? Come on. Didn't Jesus do that? I wonder, I wonder. Because nowadays the way the people respond is like, no. Don't say nothing. We're all just serving the same God. Don't you hear that one already? We're all serving the same God. Why don't we all just be one? We are not going to be one as long as you keep teaching lies. True teachers and false teachers are not called to become one. Hello, somebody. True teachers and what? Ah, false teachers are not called to be one so when you say why don't we all just come together what are you actually saying don't you realize everyone in the body of Christ truly desire that we be together so why are we not together if we have the desire to be together because we have to agree on the same teaching. Because what? We have to agree on the what? Because if it's the same teacher we get it from. Yeah. We it must agree. So though you might have a different part of it from me and I have a different part from it from you when we put the two together it still complement each other and match as the all but if what I'm saying and what you are saying are contradicting each other it cannot be put together Woo! come on somebody come on now I want you to know that those that say they are light and they're walking in light, are they really walking in light? Are they really walking in light? Because Paul had a reason for writing this letter. He had a what? A reason for writing this letter. To tell them in Ephesians 5 verse 8 to 10, you were once darkness. Why would they have to remind them of what they were before? If there was no threat or any point of clue being given that they are drifting back to what they were before. You got it? So Paul had to write to them and said, you were once, and he used the word once to say, you're not to go back there again. He never said you were several times darkness, but just coming to light from time to time. That is what most churches would want to hear. Then it matched the doctrine and the lifestyle. Come on now. But he says, you were once darkness. Yeah? But now, is there a now? But now you are light in the Lord. What does he command him to do then? Walk as children of light. Come on now. 
So I say, don't just be in the light. Woo! Come on now. Don't just be in the light, but walk as children of light. Come on. Because what he said, there is a fruit that must produce from your life. All your conduct and your behavior must be summed up in the fruit of the spirit that is living in you. And he says, the fruit of the spirit is in all goodness, in all righteousness, and in all what? Not some truth, all truth. The all there is referring to goodness, righteousness, and truth. Come on, somebody. Hello. And what he tell you to do? Finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. Now, some would rather do what is acceptable to their church. What is acceptable to their pastor. What is acceptable to their mother or their father, sister, brother, son or daughter. What is acceptable to their wife or to their husband. But the Lord says, you in the light must find out what is acceptable to the Lord. Hear it somebody. Why you must find out what is acceptable to the Lord. There may be things you deem acceptable that the Lord doesn't deem acceptable. There may be things other people deem acceptable that the Lord do not deem acceptable. Are you hearing me? And so he says, you must find out. You must what? Find out what is what? Acceptable to the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on. Now Paul encouraged the saints in Romans 12, verse 1 and 2, that they are to present their bodies. Huh? Present their bodies as what? As a living sacrifice. It's not as a dead one. Come on. As a living sacrifice. He says, you must present your body to the Lord now. It's not when you're on deathbed. And you're going to breathe the last. Then you say, yes, Lord. Here I am, Lord. Just as I am without one plea. No, he says, while you're alive and well, come on now, present your bodies as what? As a living sacrifice. Present it as a living sacrifice. And how is that sacrifice presented? Holy, acceptable to God. It's not about what man deem acceptable. Is what God deem acceptable. Which is what? He says, this is your reasonable service. Or other translation would say, this is your act of worship. This is all your worship, God. Come on, somebody. And he says, and do not be conformed to this world. Don't fit in. Come on, somebody. Don't what? Fit in with the mold of this world. This world has a mold. Why is it called mold? Or oh, when men making blocks, like building blocks, they have a mold. That when they throw the cement and the mixture in it, each block come out the same shape and form and size. The world has a mold that makes everyone who has subscribed to it adulterous, corrupt, and evil. Because the whole world is under the sway of Satan. Come on now. The what? Mm -hmm. The whole world is under the sway of Satan. Satan is referred to as the God of this world. Huh? Hello. He's referred to as what? The common G-O-D. 
idolized by men because of what he's offering that they're willing to bow to him to get. He, of course, tried to tempt Jesus to bow to him to get some things in this world. But Jesus refused. But there are other men who are bowed. Come on now. And say, eh, eh. We, we can't wait on the Lord. Lord, too slow. Come on, somebody. And as a result of that, huh? They have given heed to his temptations and have subscribed to ungodliness, filthiness, lewdness, sexual immorality, lies and corruption, dishonesty and all impurity and vulgarity. They have embraced it as a way of life. Come on, somebody. Though it speaks against the word of God. Hello? They are living that kind of life. And the Lord is saying, uh-uh, I didn't call you to live that kind of life. Come on, somebody. Huh? I didn't call you to live that kind of life. So he's saying to them, be not conformed to this world, to this age, to the fashion after, and to be adapted to the external and superficial customs of this world. Come on. But be transformed. That word transform means to be changed. By what? The renewing of your mind. The what? Renewing of your mind. By its new ideals and new attitude. Come on now. So that you may what? You may prove for yourself. What is that good? Notice Justin say what is good. Everybody will say they know what is good. But he said, what is that good? There's a specific question about the good he's looking for. That's why he used the word that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Come on. And he says, you have the ability to prove it. Hallelujah. And to know this acceptable, perfect, and good, and perfect will of God. And he says, to do so, your mind, your what? Your mind must be renewed. So he says, who is going to do that renewing? Because how can you believe on what you don't know? You see it now? So that's how it says Jesus himself gave to the church. He didn't give them to the world. He gave them to the saints. Though the saints are saints, they are still needful of trainers. Ah, they are still needful of what? Train us to bring them into the right mentality, attitude, and behavior as saints. They are called saints, but they got to be trained to live as saints. Hello. Come on. They entered this by faith. They didn't work to be saints. But now they must work to, bring, to bear the fruit of righteousness. And it is called fruit. Ah, uh, it is called what? All right, it's Hebrews 12. What is that? Verse 17. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 11. Yes, verse 10 and 11. Hebrews 12, verse 10 and 11. He says, For they indeed, speaking of our earthly fathers, chase us as seemed best to them. But he, he who, he our heavenly father, chases us for who, for what? For our profit. So when he says, he for our profit, he's still talking about chasing us. Because he's talking about the chastisement, the chastening, of the Lord. 
The what? Chasten of the Lord. He says, this chasten of the Lord or this discipline, this correction and training of the Lord brings forth this fruit. You didn't just believe and us get fruit. It's not safe work. Don't let nobody fool you. Watch this. He says, but they chastened us, what? As he bested them, but he for our profit, that we may what? Why did he chasten us? That we may be what? Partakers of his holiness. Come on, somebody. You see, just saying that I have faith, he cleansed me, didn't make you partaker. What's the thing? But he said, the chastening makes you partakers. It is to prepare you that you may be partakers. That's proper quoted. To prepare you that you may be what? Partakers of his holiness. He says, no chastening seems to be joyful. It's not something. No child being disciplined or uh, being corrected. Jump ugly and say, yeah, mommy beat me. No. But he says, it, 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 huh? <laughs> It's not joyful for the present, but what? Painful. Come on now. But what is it painful to? It is painful to the flesh. Hello. It is what? It is painful to the flesh. That the one who is administering the discipline doesn't mean to destroy the child but he means to correct a certain behavior within the child get it somebody huh? but it's a, it, the pain that is administered to the flesh is not intended to leave pain in the child's spirit but to correct something in the spirit for that child's spirit to grow, to become more mature, more responsible. Huh? It better behaved. Well behaved. Come on now. So he says, it's painful. Nevertheless, afterward, is there afterward? Afterward, it yields what? The peace of the fruit. Notice that. Fruit of righteousness to who? To everybody? Everybody who believe? No, it's to everybody who has been trained by it. Trained by it. The one who is administering, come on, that is administering the chasing and the correction is there to bring you into that righteousness. And it is through the word. It is what? The word of God. The Hebrew writer also said it. I believe it's in Hebrews 12 verse 4. That if we say the word of God is quick and powerful. As 4 verse 10. Four, or in the reverse. 4 verse 12. Huh? It says, for the word of God is what? Living and powerful and what? sharper than any two-edged sword. It says, the word of God is sharper than a surgeon's knife. Sharp! Come on. When we preach the word, why you think say some don't steal? Because if you love flesh, I will start to blend this blade around here. You're not staying. Uh-huh. But if you love the spirit, and the word of God is the sword of the spirit, <laughs> that it is correcting something in your innermost being, and you want that correction, you will bear through the discomfort in the flesh for something you're going to gain in the spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
But when you're talking to carnal believers, carnal and fleshly believers, we tell you, sir, no preach for me. I must shut your go ear. Why your words sound like it attack about me, sir? But we didn't come in the house of God to preach and cheer and bench our. We come to preach and people. Last time I check is people right about in the Bible. And if you say no one, nobody to preach, nobody business. You need to know some people business right now, Bible. And if you them business right there, if you make me talk to you about fear business. So if you don't want me to talk to you about fear business, you come to the wrong address. Hello, somebody. Because David is not written about for us to just hear about what I'm with David. What is to bring correction to us? Huh? Come on now. It is written to bring exhortation and correction and reproof. Uh, come on. So he said the word is quick. It is what? That word be quick is what he called living. <laughs> it's not some dead words. We're just using some bowels and consonant and just saying word. And say, Cho, word is wind. You wait to go and see if this word is wind. As long as it's the word of God, and God used the word of God to create all things that are created, you will find say this word is not just wind. Hello, somebody, because it's the word of God. Hello, and it is living and it is powerful, full of power. Glory to God, and it is sharper. Than any two-edged sword, piercing what? Even to the division of soul and spirit. Come on now. Anything large between soul and spirit in your being, the word of God can get between there and check it out. Come on, somebody. That's why the devil don't like you go any place. You can truly hear the word. Because those who God sent to declare the word, they come with an anointing. This is not just talk. This ain't no religious hard talk. Hello, somebody. This is the word of God. This is not a table for hearing the opinions of men. Come on. It's the word of God we sent to declare to you. And he says that word gets between soul and spirit. Come on, somebody. Between even joints and marrow. Come on. Hello. Soul and spirit is dealing with things in your spirit. Come on now. Um, joints and marrow is dealing with things in your flesh. Come on now, somebody. And thoughts and intents of the heart is dealing with things in your mind. He said the word of God deals with the total man. Come on now. It is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Come on. Give God a praise here. Glory to God. Hello. So he says, no wonder the Lord says in Matthew 4 verse 4, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that what? Proceeds out of the mouth of God. He says, the word is to take care of everything in you. Anything the devil touch, mar, shift, or dispossess, the word of God can bring it back. The word of God is powerful. The word of God is God. Hallelujah. And there's nothing impossible for him. Hello, somebody. Hello. So when he said walk in the light, he also speaks of walking in the life that the word brings to you. Walking in what? 
the life that the words bring. The word brings to you a life. That's why David said, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I will not sin against you. The word of God is to stop you from sin. It gives you a pure life. Hello, somebody. And if you're not walking in truth, how you going to have that pure life? Come on. Your mind has to be renewed to what the word of God says. Hello. And you have to allow the Holy Spirit to unveil its truth and revelation into your spirit. You can't use your intellect. Huh? Your high school brain and try this if this. Huh? Uh-uh. He said, this don't come because you have high IQ. Or because you are some scientific genius. Huh? Because you are the, 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 the star boy or star girl for educational institution. He said, uh-uh. Because the natural man can't understand this. Hello. In other words, your natural mind won't wrap around this thing. You need spiritual help to get it. Hello, somebody. This is not reading like a newspaper or a poem book. Huh? This book that you're reading and you hear people declaring, it's the scriptures are here. And it says scripture was written by holy men. Huh? By who? Holy men moved. Come on. As they were instructed by the Holy Spirit. Come on, somebody. So even they that are writing depend on the Holy Spirit for what they were writing and recording. Hello? Hello? And so it says, if you are going to look into it to understand it, you need teachers to help you. Jesus came as the teacher to the Jews. Because uh, Nicodemus pointed out to him in John 3 verse 2, 1 and 2. Nicodemus came and said to him, we know you're a teacher sent from God. What did he call him? A teacher sent from God. He said, because what? No one can do these signs that you do unless what? God is with him. Come on. But it was not the signs he came to teach them. It was the teaching that he brought to them. That was what he brought to them. That makes him a teacher. But that's why Jesus said further down, in John that they had not received his testimony because they're watching the miracles but they're not paying attention to the teachings and it's the teachings that make them disciples it's not the miracles somebody need to hear that again it's the teaching that makes them disciples it's not the miracles. Hello? Come on. Hello? Are you following me? Jesus said it to Nicodemus is in verse 9. Verse 10. Yes, verse 10 to 12. He said, Jesus answered and said to him, Are you the teacher? Because he's a teacher. Talking to Jesus as a teacher. But when the teacher start to hear Jesus as the teacher teach, the teacher have to say to Nicodemus, are you the teacher of Israel and do not know these things? Come on. In other words, why are they teaching people them, sir? Come on now. He says, watch this. He says, most assuredly I say to you, we speak. Notice he got plural now. Watch what Jesus said. We speak what we know and testify what we have seen. And you do not receive 
our weakness. Come on. Come on. Hear it. Hear what Jesus said in verse 12. If I have told you earthly things and you do not believe, how will you believe if I tell you heavenly things? Come on now. See? So it says, there is more to learn than earthly things. Nicodemus, come on. And he says, if I'm telling you about earthly things and you don't believe, how are you going to understand heavenly things? Come on, somebody. Are you following here? Walking in the light brings revelation. Light exposes things. Darkness hides things. Come on. We don't put things in the light to hide it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on now. So that's why, that's why Paul says you have no fellowship. That's Ephesians 5. Yes, Ephesians 5 verse 11 to 13. Have no fellowship with what? The unfruitful works of darkness, but rather what? He said, if you are light, you must expose the things that darkness covering up. Okay. He didn't just say, don't participate in them. He said, expose them. He didn't say, no, you stay in your corner. And I stay in mine. That wasn't the life Jesus was living. Come on. For he says, for it is shameful. It is what? Shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. That's another thing about darkness. This level of secrecy. Cover up. That produces more corruption. There's not a level of transparency. Accountability. Integrity. Is lacking. But they still say they are of the Lord. Liars. And he said in verse 13, all things that are exposed are what? They are made manifest by the light. For whatever manifests, whatever reveal is light. Hello. Come on, somebody. Hello. I believe a church can start out wrong. A church can what? Start out wrong and wrong footed and repent over the state of how they started and align with truth. No, sir. Align with truth. But if that church remains stubborn in the era of how they started and start to build on that era, no matter how high they build in that era, it is still false and it is still coming down. Hello? Because it's built on an error that they did not correct. You hearing me? It's built on what? And you cannot build on lies and still end in truth. Can I talk to somebody? You cannot what? You cannot build on lies and end in truth. Come on. That foundation must be torn up 
and expose what it is and lay a new foundation. What you say? Lay a what? A new foundation in truth. Remember what John said? First John 2 verse 21. I have written to you because I have not written to you because you do not know the truth but because you know it and listen of knowing the truth that there is no lie in truth no lie is of the truth while a person can put some truth in a lie they tell they will still tell a lie using some truth they cannot speak truth and put some lies in it and it still be truth it is meant to deceive the area so it's a lie come on no one can use lies and get people saved because Satan is the father of lies Jesus said that in John 8 verse 44 Satan is the father of lies and he says then that since lies come from him salvation not coming from him and if we can tell lie and get you saved then Satan get you saved because all lies come from Satan Jesus called him the father of lies say so he's a liar and the father of it come on he's a liar and the so the church need to abandon all lies that they're preaching to the people come on I've sat down with many of pastors and with sitting down with them we all were there and were in agreement until they go back to a different churches I am light so I have to reveal something here for you Huh? What do you mean agree till you go back to your churches? Because they have signed on and a document in those churches to preach according to the doctrine of that church. So though they know that there are errors in it, they cannot change what the doctrine says. <laughs> though they know there are errors in it they cannot change what the doctrine said and those errors that they condone is what dividing the church they know it's there and they agree it is there from all that I've spoken to. Come on, somebody. They agree it is there. But to change it, they will have to change numerous volumes of what they call church manuals. Can't, what all the constitution of their doctrine would have to be reprinted and revised. And would cost them millions and some billions of dollars. So they say, let it remain. Come on. Let it remain. It's not going to cost them their soul. You are telling me that when people believe lies, it's not going to cost their soul. Come on now. When Satan come with lies, 
Is it to save your soul? The Jesus doctrines have any lies in it? Come on. Then would his faithful servants have lies in their doctrine? Come on. I'm talking to you. You that believe, everybody must just come together and be one. Let us face the fact that you, there must be a point that people who are faithful to lies give up on that commitment to lies to become one with those who are faithful to the truth. Because if those who are faithful with the truth come together and agree with the liars, they are no longer in truth. You hear that one? Come on. And it's the truth that makes us free. Lies put us in bondage to more lies and more lies and more lies. Because lies also require more lies to support it. But truth can stand on its own. Come on. That's why the people need a sure foundation to build their faith on. And it must be built on truth. This is what the light is about. The light of life in Christ. He is the way the truth and the life and he says you shall know the truth huh? and the truth shall what make you free but how do you become free by abiding in his teachings Jesus said that to some Jews who believed on him in John 8 verse 30 to 36 he spoke these words as what many believed in him then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him so he's speaking to those who believed in him and he said to them if you you the ones who believe in me if you abide in my word you are my disciples indeed in other words, Jesus never told them, just believe on Jesus and you're safe. Jesus told them they had to abide in his teachings, what he called his word, to be truly his disciples. And becoming truly his disciples, they would know the truth. You see it? That's it in verse 31 and 32 of John 8 it says you will know the truth and the truth shall make you free Jesus teaching here reveals to us something that most preachers are not saying that when you know the truth the truth sets you free from sin This was what they hated Jesus for. Because someone to say they know the truth while they're still sinning. Jesus never taught no such thing. It is his teachings we have to adhere to to become his disciples. The teacher come with a teaching. Come on, somebody. The what? The teacher come with a teaching. And he's saying, I'm not here for you to say what a nice teacher he is. He's here to relay the message. Come on. Hello. Hallelujah. It is not if if it is just about Jesus dying on the cross and we get forgiveness of sin 
Remember the word says he didn't die on the cross for us alone but for the whole world. Hello. So why isn't the whole world saved? You see, it's not just that Jesus died for your sin and you're saved. That's what they're telling you. What Jesus is saying to you now, you've got to understand that is the teaching going to keep you from sin. Him dying on the cross will bring forgiveness of sin and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. But the teaching is what's going to keep you from re-entering back in that sinful life. Got it? So that's why I said, is the word going to make you free? The word is what is calling truth. Abide in my word. You are my disciples indeed if you abide in my word. Correct? Verse 32, 31 and 32. If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. You sh and you shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you. So what is the truth? His word is teaching. Is his word. Ah. And what is that teaching going to do? Set them free. But free from what? That's what they didn't understand in verse 32. What is that? 33. They said to him, We are Abraham's descendants. Now they are saying they are Abraham's descendants. They are saying they are descendants of a man of faith. They are also saying they are people of faith. Did Jesus just say, all right, you're Abraham's descendants. That faith is good, man. You're all right. No. They were saying because they're Abraham's descendants, they're not in slavery to anyone. They are free. So how can he make them free? How can they be set free? They're free already. What did Jesus say? Jesus answered, most assuredly I say, to you whoever commits sin is a slave of sin and a slave does not abide in the house forever but a son notice what he says anyone who commits sin does not abide in the house forever what is the house there his kingdom then are, they are going to be removed. Come on. But he said, but a son. Notice he never said this son. Speaking of only himself. Look at the son there. And the son in the next verse. One is in commonness. And one in capitalist. You're reading from the New Kingdom Version. He says, but a son abides forever. And he says, therefore, if the son... Now we talk about this son versus talking about a son. Get it? When he says this son, he's speaking of himself. Get it? He is the son of God. But we through him are made sons of God. Get it? Right. So he says, it's the son that makes you a son. Move you from being a slave to being a free huh? offspring of God made in his true righteousness and holiness. Hello? So it says, if the son makes you free, that is plain on the words that he said, know the truth and the truth makes you free. He is the truth. And he says, when you know my teaching, you are knowing my life. You are receiving of my life through my teachings. You cannot have that life without the teachings. And to have the teachings, there must be a teacher. 
Hello. Come on. So, what did they receive him? No, they rejected him. They, in fact, became angry because he dare call himself the Son of God and refer to them who were committing sin as slaves. They were offended at his teaching. Come on. Did they receive his teaching? No, they rejected it. Come on now. Even wanted to kill him. Come on now. That's in verse 39. Huh? Verse, verse 38 to 40. Right, verse 38 to 40 says, I speak what I have what? I have seen with my father and you do what you have seen with your father. Does that sound like they have the same father? Though they say they serve the same God, they are children of Abraham. They are children of faith. Does Jesus affirm to them that yes, it's the same God you're serving anyway. We don't see things differently. No, that's not how Jesus talk. Jesus said to them, you doing what you see with your father and I'm doing what I see with mine. And they answered and said, Abraham, is our father jesus said to them if you were abraham's children you would do the works of abraham come on hello talk to me here but now you seek to kill me a man who has told you the truth which i heard from god Abraham did not do this. Come on. You do the deeds of your father. Then they said to him what? We were not born of fornication. We have one father. God. No, they're saying God is their father. One God and father of us all. God. Did Jesus agree with them on that too? No. No. Jesus said to them, if God were your father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Nor have I come of myself, but he sent me. Come on. Didn't that he said? He said, so if he said, he sent me. Or is must him same one? Oh, he must be the father. And he said, I did not come up myself. Liars, stop lying. Tell the people the truth. Because Jesus speaks truth. And if Jesus said he did not come of himself, oh, it's going to be Jesus only. Liars! Come on, somebody. Stop lying to the people. Come on, somebody. This comes from Jesus' mouth. And you are saying it wrong? Come on. Jesus said, Who is the head of the church? And he appoints heads of the church under his leadership. So how you get revelation? How you get revelation that make you talking something against what Jesus said? And saying is that that he mean? What it mean when you say? You don't come off yourself. Come on, somebody. You mean say you have to learn Hebrew and Greek if you know that? Come on now. Error is lies are in their teaching and they are proud with their lies.
and they knew every lie come from the devil you cannot use lies and save people for the Lord I'm talking to you Jesus did not say to them oh yes man we have one father and God no Jesus said to them no if God were your father you would love me for I proceeded forth and came from him I come from him and what he said nor have I come of myself but he sent me and here what Jesus said why do you not understand my speech now someone would have said am I talking French come on this is a common language anyone who speak it will understand so he said why do I need to go in a lexicon trace back to original language and see if they can get that twist come on somebody don't you see the error that your build your teachings on is eating at the heart of the people can you sow some lies in it so the people can be purely saved because there's a mixture in the water they drink the water is polluted with lies and you're causing the sheep to graze and drink polluted water your mud up with your foot come on he said why do you not understand my speech what the Lord said to them because you are not able to listen to my word yeah. and if you are not able to listen to my word how are you going to hear God if you don't listen to those who are sent by God that's what Jesus was saying to him ah, Jesus didn't say a God sent from God but he said a man who heard from God he know he is God in nature in spirit but in his bodily form he spoke to them as a man huh? as Philippians 2 said finding himself in the appearance of a man he became he humbled himself and became obedient even unto death but who was he obedient to himself to his father come on somebody hello I'm talking to you and if you build your teaching on lies you're deceiving the people you can have all your show have all your choir have all your different departments have all your different ministries but it's built on lies it's built on the devil hello somebody all that Jesus built on is truth yeah all that Jesus built on is what? Truth and nothing but the truth. Huh? So he said to them, because they were not able to listen to his word, then he called them what? Children of the devil in verse 44. Did he say they were all, we're all God's children? No, not even Jesus teach that. But you have that no teaching. We are all God's children, some obedient and some disobedient. Liar! Jesus did not teach that. Jesus taught that if you don't receive the truth, 
You're a child of the devil. Come on. He said it in verse 44 to them. 43 and 44 of John 8. Why do you not understand my speech? Because you are not able to listen to my word. You are of your father, the devil. And the desires of your father, you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there's no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources. For he is what? A liar and the father of it. Come on, give me some more there. And what did they say to him? But because, Jesus said, because I tell you the truth. Because what? Because I tell you the truth, you do not believe me. In other words, if I lied to you, you would have believed. Because that's how your father steer. He's a liar and the father of lies. So if I lied to you, you would have believed it. But because I'm telling the truth, you don't believe you're just like your papa. You're just like your papa. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He says, which of you convicts me of sin? And if I tell you the truth, why do you not believe? Come on. If I, so that is a question now for them to examine themselves and see, did we go wrong in this? In a response to him? My God. Hello. Did they listen to him? No. He says, he who is of God, he who is of God, what do they do? He who is of God hears God's words. Therefore, you do not hear because you are not of God. God's children hear God's words. If you want a truck, a child of God just start to talk about God's word. No matter what they're doing, their attention gets caught. Because they are attracted to God through his word and his spirit. Come on, somebody. And you can talk about everything else in a true child of God. Ignore or block you out or turn their mind away. But once you declare in the word of God, you got their attention. Why? Because there is a place in them for the word. Children of the devil have no place in them for the word. Come on now. They are like their father, the devil. No places in them for the truth. Come on. Hey. If you walk in the light, huh? If you're in the light, walk in the light. Come on, somebody. Don't just talk about it. Live it. Come on now. Don't just say, we are the light of the world. Uh, let your light shine before men. That they will what? See your good works and glorify your father. You notice when he say, it's not glorified, dear father. <laughs> you need to mark those words so you can understand the thing properly. They will glorify your father in heaven. Come on. Your father in heaven. Come on now. Hello. You have to understand what we declare here. If you are in the truth, abide in the truth. Hello. And stop telling the people lies. Hello. You seven the Adventists. Stop telling the people lies. 
There is no wrong day to worship the Lord. From Genesis to Revelation, as no such verse telling you there's a wrong day to worship the Lord. You are a bunch of liars. You and your papa soon join together in a hell. You must tell the people the truth. It don't matter which day you worship him. You must worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Come on, somebody. Hello, somebody. My God, my God, my God. Stop lying to the people. Stop lying to them and telling them who eat poor Kagagua hell. You're liars. Jesus said it. That nothing that a man eats defile him. For he says what you eat don't go in your heart. It goes into your stomach. And is purged and sent out as filth. But he said what defile you is what is in your heart. Fornication. Adultery, ad idolatry, lying, stealing, blasphemy, false witness, murder, evil thoughts. These, he says, are the things that defile a man. Come on, liars, stop lying to the people. And saying you are preachers, saying you are spreading the gospel, you liar. You need to stop lying and speak the truth. Hello, that the people can come together in the unity of the faith. Hello, the faith is based on truth. I said the faith is based on what? Truth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We want you to come in the truth. We want you to know the truth. Hello, somebody. How you tell those, those Jehovah Witness liars? Jehovah Witness liars. You need to get back to the truth. There is no church without a pastor. Jesus never start any such one. Jesus is the pastor of his church. That word pastor is the word referred to the word shepherd. And he said in Ephesians 4 verse 11 to 16 that he gave to the church. He gave to the church what? Apostles and prophets, evangelists, pastors and teachers for the saints. You who get up there and tell them about the church have gone to pagan worship, but you're going to start study group and meet up in what you call kingdom all. Liars! When people are getting saved, they are sent to the church. They are not sent to kingdom all. You need a pastor. You don't have one there. And all you're telling the people is quoting from Jeremiah 23. Verse 1, but woe to the false pastors that lead the people astray. But you don't quote to them Jeremiah 3. Verse 15 that he says, I will give them pastors according to my heart that will teach them knowledge and understanding. Liars! Jesus is the one that built the church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. The church still stands strong. 
Come on. But you have turned their minds against pastors. You have turned their minds against apostles. You have turned their mind against evangelists. You have turned their mind against prophets. You have become your own little study group. Do you ever witness liars? You need a pastor, that's why you can't collect no tithe. Because you don't have one. That's why when you're having a large supper, you have to pass it around and nobody can eat it. You don't have a pastor to officiate for you. You are like sheep without a shepherd. Repent. Come on, somebody. I'm here to declare the truth. And Jesus call them out and tell them, repent. They had some beliefs before that they had to change why he said to them, repent. They believed some things that they were saying were true. That he was saying, no, that's false. That's why he said, repent. Huh? But you cannot continue in the falsehood and come out true. You must abandon what is false. You must have no partake in no work of darkness and unrighteousness. Hello? Embrace the truth. Embrace the truth. Come on, somebody. You Baptist liars. Baptist liars that been telling the people that there's no speaking in tongues today. It's gibberish. You liars! How can you call the gift of the Holy Spirit gibberish? Paul said it is the gift of the Holy Spirit to speak in diverse tongues. It's not something you ever to school to learn. It is something done by the Holy Spirit giving you utterance to do so. And he says those who speak in tongues should pray to interpret. And he says those should, they should not despise tongues. Should not what? Despise tongues. Should not speak against it. Not the person using it. Come on. You blaspheme the work of God. Calling the work of God the work of the devil is blaspheming the Holy Spirit. And blaspheming the Holy Spirit, the word of God says, will not be forgiven in this life nor in the life to come. When you call the work of the Holy Spirit the work of the devil, you have blasphemed the Holy Spirit. Come on. Turn. What I say. Repent. From your ways. You are hearing this preacher declare it to you today. Turn from your wicked ways. Come on somebody. Be filled. And baptized with the Holy Spirit. Water baptism is not it. It's said in Acts chapter 19. Paul found some who were baptized with water, but had not been baptized and filled with the Holy Spirit. And he ministered to them the word, baptized them in Jesus' name, and laid hands on them for them to receive the Holy Spirit, and they did. Come on, somebody. Huh? That in Acts 19, that's in verse 1, and it happened while Apollos was at Corinth that Paul, having passed through the upper regions, came to Ephesus. Finding some disciples, he said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? They said to him, We have not much as heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. And he said to them, Into what then were you baptized? They said, Into what? John's baptism. Come on. Then Paul said, John indeed baptized with what? 
Come on, talk to me. John indeed baptized with what? <laughs> baptized with a baptism of repentance. See there, man? You know, really? John indeed baptized with what? John indeed baptized with what? With a baptism of repentance, saying to the people that they should believe on him. Huh? Who would come after him? That is who? And Christ, when they heard this, they were what? Baptized in the name of the Lord. And when Paul had laid hands on them, what happened? The Holy Spirit came upon them and what did they do? They spoke with tongues and prophesied. Come on. Was that on the day of Pentecost? No, that was long after and that was still happening. And there was no one there to interpret for them. So you need to stop that false propaganda you're spreading. But it was in the day of Pentecost because nations were around them to hear them in tongue. You're lying to the people. Liars. Come on. You need to speak the truth. Hello. Hallelujah. If you are in the light, walk in the light. Come on. What is he must do? Walk in the light as children of light, not as those in the darkness who once were ignorant of him, but now walk in the knowledge of him. Hello, and the God of glory will reveal his power in you. Come on, somebody, children of light, children of God are called children of light, huh? One of the most Notable characteristics of light is that light does not discriminate. Huh? A light bulb that is properly connected to an electrical source does not care who comes into the room. Huh? Once there is electrical power in it, it will give light to all that is in the house. When it is turned on, huh? Its light shines for everyone and anyone that's around it. Come on. In other words, you're not Christian when you're in the church. And when you're not in the church with your sinner friend, them, you're mellow out. Light does not discriminate. Come on. You don't praise God only within the church walls. Hallelujah. And some no no said no hallelujah till they come in a church building. Come on, somebody. He says, No, you are light. Shine light everywhere you go, man. Come on, somebody. Hello. If one is walking in light, it must be seen in the way they live. Huh? Another notably important characteristic of light. Is that light exposes what is hidden. Doesn't cover for it. Hello. It does not discriminate. Light can only be light. Huh? It shines for whoever is around it. Huh? Come on. It means, uh, you know, they say hallelujah. When you're amongst church, where they say hallelujah. But when you're amongst the bad costing friend them, you can't say hallelujah. You hallelujah don't in your throat. If them can open their mouth and bust them bad word, open your mouth and bust a hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Because you are light. Light must shine. Darkness mustn't light get that. Let light get dim. Light must shine in the darkness. Come on. Jesus taught his disciples this truth about light. Come on. That they must shine amidst the darkness. It's not put under a bushel. 
Huh? It's put on a lampstand to give light to everyone in the house. Huh? So he said they must walk in the light. Huh? Come on, somebody. In John 8, verse 12, Jesus said it, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but he shall have what? The light of life. The what? The light of that same John 8, verse 12. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And now he says, you are the light of the world. You is disciples. Huh? He call you what? The light that's Matthew 5 verse 14 to 16. He says, you are the light of the world. Children of God are called to be light and to expose hidden things of darkness. No child of God huh? is a double agent. Huh? You know double agent? Sometime light, sometime darkness. No? Come on now. They must be light consistently. Hello? That is why we are called to walk in the light. It is a continuous journey. Yeah? Come on, somebody. Which requires consistency. It must be evident in your word and evident in your work. Come on, somebody. The life of a believer is always on display. The life of a believer is what? Always on display. They attract attention just as light does. So you can't say, I'm a believer, and we just want people to stop watching me. They must watch you. You're a light. Come on, somebody. Light attracts attention to itself. It's not something that people should guess. It must be clear before them who you are. Come on, and who you stand for. Huh? Come on, people of God. Stand with me. We're going to pray. Our time is up. Praise God. You are the light of the world. Let your light shine before men that they will see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. If you say light, let it be light. But if you are saying light and you're in darkness, how dark is that darkness? But if you say light, walk in the light. Live as those who are in the light. And don't just talk about it. God don't want just some speakers. God's raising up children. And children of God, as Ephesians 5 verse 1 says, must be imitators of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Lift those hands and worship him in the house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know the one, carry your candle. Go light world. Praise God. Hallelujah. Just play that one and let them pray for the Lord. Come on, whatever is going on in your heart, we want you to talk to God about it. Wherever you have allowed the enemy to creep in, talk to the Lord about it. Wherever you have shied away from speaking out against unrighteousness, talk to the Lord about it. Don't let it be disguised anymore as just being shy. But command that fear to come out of your life. And walk in the strength of the Lord. Be strong in the Lord. And in the power of his might. Don't fear them. That only can destroy the body. But fear the one who can destroy both body and soul in hell. Don't be ashamed to speak against what is wrong. Don't be ashamed to speak 
against what is false expose it don't be a partaker of it or don't ignore it light must be light come on somebody hallelujah glory to God <laughs> carry your candle and through the darkness seek out the hopeless confusing form yes come on sing for all to see take your candle Go like your work. Take your candle. Go light your work. Carry your candle. Come on. Seek out the hopeless. Confusion on. to reveal it be on display for the world to see the light of life in Christ in you come on somebody father we thank you you said this is the message we heard from the beginning God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. So if we say we have fellowship with you and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we confess our sins, you say, Lord, oh my God, willing and just to forgive us, to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, everything that led to brought us back in that sin you remove it from us through your word and your holy spirit you're working on us even now as this word is declared i pray against every argument and speech and debate every resistance rebellion spirit of disobedience Bind and shut down right now in the name of Jesus. Let your Holy Spirit minister to the hearts of those who have heard this word. That they will be devoted, loyal to truth. Devoted and loyal to the truth. For it's that love of truth. That will save them from the hour of temptation. That will save them from that great hour of deception. That will hit the world. 
those who are not rooted in truth will be drawn away I pray grace over their lives now that though the devil may have had foot all in their life and even now as they hear the word they'll rebuke him from ever having any access to their life as they embrace your anointing let your anointing destroy every yoke and lift every burden and lead them into all truth they will know the truth and the truth will make them free for who the sun set free is free indeed now, Lord, let the words of their mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. You are our strength and our redeemer. Release healing over your people now. Healing over their bodies. Healing over their minds. Healing over their spirit, man. In the name of Jesus. For you are the great physician. Sickness and disease are subjected to. Death has no power over you. So we declare the life, that eternal life to them. In Jesus' name, to quicken their mortal bodies, heal and deliver them now. In Jesus' name. Come on, somebody give him the praise. Somebody give him the glory. Give him the praise in the house. Glory, glory, glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Awesome God we serve. He's a mighty God. Do you believe that? Praise God. You enjoy the presence of the Lord. You enjoy the word of God. Keep on growing in him. And let the word get a deeper root in him. More and more you embrace the word, the deeper it gets. Ah, ah. Anything that is not of God, the word will get it out. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, just read those signs and say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Send up a praise to our God. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Time to release you. Give you a chance to sow as the Lord has laid upon your heart and give the final word to those who are watching online. We are already over 30 minutes of our time, so we got to go and release you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. While you're doing so well, just hand it out the so, Okay, fine. Praise God. All right. Those who are watching online and watching Increasing Faith Deliverance Ministry International, we are 3 East Street, Montego Bay, Jamaica. I'm Apostle Richard Fagan declaring the gospel of Christ and his kingdom. I want you to know God's purpose is that you be rooted and grounded in the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. That when the devil comes, he finds nothing in you. Hallelujah. Because the devil is the father of lies. But where there is no lie, you got nothing to hold you with. You got to abide in the truth. And the truth must abide in you. Praise God to bear 
true fruit of righteousness in your life. Amen. And be true partakers of God's holiness, his purity. For he says, be holy, for I am holy. Praise God. So we want you to know more about the gospel that Jesus preached. It's called the gospel of the kingdom. We have a book out there released last year. It's called the gospel of the kingdom. It's on Amazon.com. You can go on Amazon.com and type in the search box Richard V. Fagan. The book will come up. It's called the gospel of the kingdom. Subtitled the gospel that Jesus preached. So it be a good read for you to encourage the foundational teachings that Christ declared in knowing the gospel. And that will shift some of the attitudes and thoughts that you have that have been hindering you from true fruitfulness and growth in the Lord. So we want you to accelerate your growth in the Lord. Accelerate your growth in the Lord to new heights and new levels of maturity. Hallelujah. From glory to glory. As the word declares. Amen. Praise God. So you can get it online. If you want to hear more of the teachings, check us out on Facebook. Send up. Friends request to Richard V. Fagan on Facebook. You'll be plugged in our, on our YouTube channel. Look for Richard Fagan and subscribe. You'll see more scriptures are added there for you to check scripture with scripture and to see the validity of the message that we declare here. Amen. Praise God. Those who want to contact us, you can check out our website. It's increasingfaithintl.org. That's increasingfaithintl.org. Those who desire to sow can sow through the website. Hallelujah, the website, of course. Hallelujah, have some options there for you. And those who want to write a prayer request, our prayer support can write in the comment box. We'll add our faith to your belief together. We'll gain greater and bigger report as we move forward in faith in Jesus' name. Amen. Any questions, you can call me, Richard Fagan, at 876-839-9390, 876-557-9390. Two four two seven. God bless you. Until next time, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Praise God. You're blessed today. Come on, give Him praise. Give Him praise. Hallelujah. Thank you all for being with us to this time. We usually release you earlier, but us we had a late start today. Very late, but we 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 will do better next time. Praise God. Hallelujah. God, we just thank you for your anointing and your grace over our lives. And we bless you for your anointing that is lifting us and moving us to new levels of fellowship and grace and favor in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And truly, our fellowship is with you in truth. For you desire that we be true worshipers that worship you in spirit and in truth. For without that, no one shall see the Lord. And so we embrace the grace and anointing that brings us into that level to your son Jesus Christ and the work of your Holy Spirit as we submit ourselves to his leadership. We expect greater results, greater report, and greater testimonies as we give you the praise and the glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord have his countenance upon you and give you his peace. God bless you all. Have a great day in Jesus' name. Bless you.